but Anne Sexton mm -hmm. was an idol of yours, and uh, you were fortunate enough to, was it Brown? Yeah. At, at yeah. Boston University. Boston University, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, New England. <laughs> yes. uh, to go and be in her class before yeah. she uh, took her life. I did get that comment. I couldn't remember if that came from Anne, from a teacher. Don't worry about being liked. Don't worry about your persona being liked in a poem. Something Anne said that's similar, she said, um, don't ever think that, you know, don't look at a published poem with your name under it mm -hmm. and get a big head that you wrote that poem, because she said poetry is a river that comes through you. Mm -hmm. It chooses to come through you. But it's like the same river, you know, coming through different poets. And, you know, that's poetry wrote that poem. You didn't mm -hmm. write that poem. Mm -hmm. You know, it just chose you. So. Yeah. Blogs are big. A lot of them are very confessional. Yeah. Mem people tell them everything, every <laughs> part of their business. But how would that be different from a poet? Oh! Being a confessional poet as opposed to so many people exposing themselves yeah. in different ways today. Oh, you know, it's true. At the time that Anne Sexton started writing the kind of poetry you know, that she wrote, uh, you know, as my mother would say, nobody would expose their dirty laundry mm -hmm. in public. The, you know, you, you didn't have talk shows like, you know, Dr. Phil or Jerry Springer. You, you know, you, you just didn't have that, that celebrity culture mm -hmm. where you know who's in rehab this week and, mm -hmm. you know, all that sort of thing. It, it, it just did not exist. And we know, too, that you know, America covered up many abuses that were going on. Mm -hmm. You know, the molestation of children, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, domestic abuse was just kind of laughed at or ignored, mm -hmm. you know, by many Sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah. yeah, sexual. Oh my God, I'm sure you and I can share some <laughs> stories about it. <laughs> but we took, mm -hmm. we took it for granted. It was normal. We didn't even know that's what it is. Um, whereas today, you know, we live in a culture that's almost drowning in confession and mm -hmm. in memoir and, and, you know, abuse memoirs and things like that. It's, 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 it's really, really mm -hmm. changed. But I still think, at least for the poet, still writing about issues that, you know, are painful or meaningful to, uh, you know, an individual certainly is therapeutic in the sense of helping you get a perspective mm -hmm. on them, working through them, and, you know, and I think others can often relate, you know, when mm -hmm. we put ourselves on the line in our work, that even though they might not have had that identical experience, they can relate, mm -hmm. you know, to that emotional charge behind the poem and maybe get some comfort, you mm -hmm. know, some feeling that they're not alone from it. But then, but then I, I wondered, is it possible the difference is also, one is you're writing prose, it's a cathartic yeah. event, it's, it's mm -hmm. very, it's not that different from opening a diary and just yeah. writing about the horrible day you had, whereas yeah. poets seem to be compelled, even if it's in a prose poem format or some other, to somehow craft it yeah. once it comes yeah. out. <laughs> because, you know, on the one hand, you are, you know, working through you know, mm -hmm. something that's difficult. And on the other hand, you know, you're making something, you know, you're, you're making something that's art. You know, true, you know, mm -hmm. crafting something. Yeah, making an artifact, <laughs> which is the poem. Like a little, to me, like a little music box. You know, that... Well, how important is it for the poet to be authentic? 
authentic. Um, oh, what oh, does that mean? <laughs> yeah, well, you hear that a lot. That, that gets words back to that, you know, death of the author stuff mm -hmm. with Michel Foucault and, and all that. You know, the works are authorized. Mm -hmm. We publish photographs of the author next to them in the bio note, mm -hmm. and you know, we have the person read them live. They have to come with the mm -hmm. the author. You know, versus the Middle Ages when things tended to be kind of anonymous and mm -hmm. communal and all that. Um, uh, I'm, now I'm even getting away from the question. Which is, <laughs> which is the, 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 I, I'm, yeah, we don't want to go to Michelle Foucault. <laughs> but the, um, the being honest, you were, you were, you were, yeah. you were talking about writing, you tweaking it a little bit. Like it's yeah. like you have a you can have fiction that's almost autobiographical, right? But it's not really because you change, fiction. yeah, you change. Yeah. Uh, and then confessional poetry, mm -hmm. you maybe it doesn't fit the poem, maybe you can't get the rhyme mm -hmm. right because if you put in exactly that Mr. John had on. So it's it's different from writing nonfiction. You're you're yeah. but you, yet it's still true. Yeah, yeah. and you know and, and you know there's emotional truth and there's journalistic mm -hmm. truth. You know, in, in, in a poem. Um, you know, Anne Sexton has a poem, Unknown Girl on the Maternity Ward. Mm -hmm. You know, she stated publicly that she never, you know, had a child and mm -hmm. gave it up for adoption. But yet she wrote that poem. You know, the confessional poet wrote that poem mm -hmm. in the voice of a young woman who did. You know, so, you know, there you have a confessional poet who's writing a fictional yeah. Um, whereas you have, you know, fictional books like Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar, mm -hmm. which is, you know, straight out of her life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or what else? You know, Kerouac on the Road or mm -hmm. Hemingway. Um, maybe, let's see, if you're, you said in Room With No View. <laughs> your interview. Oh, yeah. Um, Jason Reeser's blog, yeah. There are some personal events in my life that I have not yet been able to write about, but I hold out hope that one day, uh, that I will one day, mm -hmm. because it would mean that the frozen state of repression could end and the grief process could begin. Mm -hmm. So this goes back to uh, the idea, or at least for me, and, yeah. and of uh, poetry again, or the working through. Uh, a poem as a form of therapy yeah. that produces healing. So, what, what, when you um, said this, were you thinking about that type of process and how yeah. important is that process? I would think for women in particular. Or oh, for women in particular, huh? As opposed to men. I suppose, you know, it's hard, it's always been harder for men in American society to admit that they are in emotional pain, you know, that anything is wrong, that they're not mm -hmm. strong and, <laughs> and in control. So, you know, from, from that perspective, I suppose, you know, it's always been more socially acceptable for women mm -hmm. to be dealing you know, emotional. Well, I, I, what I'm wondering about is usually when you hear about confession, we have Robert, mm -hmm. Robert Lowell, but the names that come up seem to be more often female names. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've just I've I've been wondering something I've been wondering about is it yeah. a need to confess, not confess like a priest obviously, yeah. but to to ex express what's going on in one's life, I'm, I'm, is it possible, there's any connection with the long history of women being mm -hmm. silenced? Certainly, certainly yes, because often many of the things that are subjects in women's confessional poetry have to do with powerlessness, you know, as, as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the poetry of Platt mm -hmm. and Sexton, mm -hmm. with, um, um, you know, Flap and her husband leaving her for another woman, you know, Sexton with um, issues with, you know, her father and, and, you know, abusiveness and things like that. There, you know, there are certainly, yeah, certainly issues that are gender, gender related that come out. Um, 
So, but I, you know, I thought the word confession, mm-hmm. we, especially if you have a religious background, <laughs> you think, yes, oh, right. I'm Race confessing Catholic. my sins. Right. Kissing the bartender, yeah. and uh, the villain Alfred Bell, and yeah. you're not really speaking in terms of conquest as much as it seems to me, as just relaying an experience you had, and then there's a, a some kind of introspection mm-hmm. in that. Um, is it important in your work for you to reveal to your re- to your reader some? introspection or is that just the nature of poetry? Gosh. You know, I think probably what I do, I do unconsciously Mm -hmm. and you might be spotting a pattern there that I haven't recognized myself because I'm on the inside, Mm -hmm. I guess. You've done a lot of thinking about gender differences in confessional poetry and everything. I, I really well, I really yeah. haven't because yeah. of course I read Lowell and you know Berryman mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. you know so oh, confessional. Yeah, about John Snodgrass, mm-hmm. Art's mm-hmm. Needle mm-hmm. was one of the very earliest confessional mm-hmm. works where he wrote mm-hmm. about his pain at separation and missing his child. Or could just be a gap in my education because oh. um, I remember when I was introduced to confessional poetry was mm-hmm. Sylvia Plath and Anne yes. Sexton. Yeah. And uh, this would have been back in the 70s. I guess. Yeah. And of course, I was at an all girls school, so maybe that's why they were doing Oh, where were, you, where were you in school? Uh, up in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get to back to the um, the idea of being a just confessional. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a lot in there, in rhythm and, and booze, that deals with your personal life, and as you already mentioned, just stop drinking and recognizing, and I read, recognizing. Yeah. Uh, and the issue in your family. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you? Know, how many poems do you think you probably tossed aside working through this, through, oh. through the matters covered in Rhythm and Booze? You know, I'm still writing them. I, mm-hmm. I still have some poems, and I, I have a, a manuscript that's nearing completion right now that has that still has some poems about, you know, the end of my drinking days mm-hmm. and the, you know, the beginning of sobriety. I, you know, it, it was such a huge, a huge milestone in my life. Mm-hmm. Such, you know, such a huge change that um, I'll probably never stop writing about it. I think, I want to make sure I'm talking about the right time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of, yes, of Villanelle for is it Fell? For Fell, yeah. Bill and L for Fell. Yeah. You, at the end, you mention a, a mother, or this brings up the question of <laughs> when you're dealing with confessional poets. Right. You know, one thing when you're taking a class of, oh, don't confuse the speaker of the right. poem with the poet. <laughs> but when you're dealing with confessional poets, mm-hmm. how do you separate the, yeah. the speaker from the speaker of the poem from the poet? My my poems are usually based heavily in personal mm-hmm. experience. You know, I will tweak them. I will, you know, make little changes to them to make it a better poem. Mm-hmm. You know, change details and, and facts and things here or there. Mm-hmm. But um, without that basis in personal experience, I don't think I really have that emotional charge mm-hmm. toward the subject matter. That's... The, munch, the mention of the mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had loved it sounded like my mother would have said that to me. You know, like, yep. oh, you turned up this vulgar thing. <laughs> that, that's really true. I guess it was when, was it when my first poetry book was published in, I guess it was when I had a little pamphlet of poems published in England in 1991. Was that it? Or was that poem written earlier? No, it must have been body and soul, because that 
I think Philadelphia was yeah, written at about 88 or so. It was Body and Soul. I remember reading Yeah, okay. Well, whatever <laughs> it was, I had sent my mother a copy of either my first book or my first mm -hmm. chat book. And I waited, you know, because my mother published a few short stories in, mm -hmm. in magazines. You know, she wanted to be a writer. And she mm -hmm. was, you know, I looked to her when I was growing up. Oh, you know, my mom writes. Mm -hmm. And so I was waiting and waiting and waiting to hear her response. And she didn't say anything. She didn't call mm -hmm. or anything. And finally, I think I called her and we were chatting. And I said, you know, Sally, did you read my book? And she said, there was a silence. And she said, some of the poems in there are really quite vulgar. So I had to put that. I had to put that line in another poem. She's she passed away in 1995, so she never she she never saw it in the book. But sounds like my mother and your mother could have right. been. Look at I've had it said to me before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but she was you know don't. Don't hang your dirty laundry in public. You know, oh, yeah, be, you grew up with that. Don't, too. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't tell people your problems. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm.